In today's video, we're opening up an entire case of the new Duelist Nexus Yu-Gi-Oh set. What's up guys, we're back with another opening. We have more Duelist Nexus to open up today. We did not get the Magician of Bonds and Unity or whatever that thing's called. I can't keep up, it's too long, too long of a name, too hard to remember, but we're trying to find it, the first variant version before the next three core sets. But before we do get into it, we do have a giveaway. I will be giving away a booster box of this new Duelist Nexus set. Just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know down below what you wanna see from this set and what is your favorite card or favorite retrain because there's a lot of cool ones in here. Let's get into this. This is gonna be a longer video. Sit back, relax, grab the popcorn. Okay, here we go. 288 packs to be open today, so there will be no pack tricking going on. We are going to Banishing Trap. I didn't even see this one last time, or maybe I did. Opponent summons a monster with 1,500 or less attack. Banish that monster with 1,500 or less attack face down. Wait. So it's bottomless, except it goes face down. Interesting. Almost the same thing, but what's the point of what? What's the difference in face down? This is my this is my ignorance about the TCG because normally face down it's like. Oh, Evil's are Lars, uh, Secret Rare. Normally face down, you at least know, you just, I mean, we just saw the card, you know, he summoned it and then it goes face down. So is there some sort of like searching clause or something that you can't use? Or I'm, I'm a little confused about what the difference there is with then bottomless trap hole. But uh, somebody enlighten me in the comments. I know all you TCG players will be like, come on, this is easy. This is juvenile stuff. Yeah, that this is, uh, I'm not really sure. Magician of Faithfulness, that's a super rare. Very cool card, love to see that one. Probably gonna pull those out because that's a pretty cool card. What else can we get? We've gotten a secret rare already. Another super. We were looking for that Synchron guy. I didn't bring up the price guy this time. What was his name? It was like Synchron something. We'll, we'll recognize him when we pulled him. We've pulled him before. We pulled him yesterday. And uh, obviously 25th anniversary secrets. We're gonna know those when we see him. We're looking for that Magician of Bonds of Unity. I think, I think that's the name. I'm probably get butchering it, but I'm pretty sure that's the name. The first variant one. I don't, does it have a green background because of the set? I actually don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out when we pull it either today. And if not today, no Arms Museum, very nice. If not today, we will be live streaming tomorrow. Either way, um, we're going to be live streaming. So check it out tomorrow. We will be searching hopefully for an epic card. You know, if we pull it here, I won't be mad because then we can just search for something else. But if you guys are uh, excited about this set, you guys want to be here for a live, check out tomorrow at my YouTube channel. We'll have a live stream. We will be opening a ton of these packs, even more than we're opening today, most likely. Unless we start, we need the magician. We pull in like, you know, 10 packs or something which we'll probably still open a little bit more after that, but uh, that's the only way we wouldn't have a super long stream. Hoping that it's not like super long though, because a lot of times we'll go for like six hours or something. Really don't, I don't want to go that long. I'm not going to lie, but that's, I guess the entertaining part is when it ends up being six hours when I don't want to be there. Let's keep it going. Let's get something crazy. We have a mighty Dino King Rex. I really like that card. That's super cool. I'm a big fan of the set, to be honest. Like I didn't know... I mean, I've opened it before, but I had, it was in uh, Japanese, so I didn't recognize, you know, I, had, uh, I could only look at the artwork. I didn't really know what I was looking at. But now that we're actually opening it in English, I'm actually a huge fan of the set. I'm excited. There's a lot of cool cards. Duels Genesis, love to see that. Throwback to the 2008 core set. You love to see it. Can we pull something awesome today? We've had some okay luck with first video didn't do as good you can go check that one out if you guys missed the first two videos go check them out yesterday's video uh less people watched but it was actually our better opening so don't miss that one if you guys haven't seen it yet altergeist very very cool i'm super excited about pulling the magician uh there's also a lot of other cool cards in here as well but the magician is the main one we're looking for because very cool like unique thing they've done with the background color uh personally it's like what are my what is my opinion on like oh we're doing the same card but it's a little bit different every time i think it is cool i don't think it's like that crazy i've seen some people being like this is the coolest thing we've ever done i don't think that i don't think it's the coolest thing uh because it's cool because it's a unique card in the set and you can only pull it as a 25th anniversary the thing that makes it not as cool is that they're just going to reprint it at some point is what i'm worried about because you know i thought like things like uh 10k dragon and astro utopia were going to be safe but they're reprinting astro utopia so if they're going to reprint that why wouldn't they reprint this and it makes me worried like if i'm going to collect this stuff it's like first of all if you're going to collect it and you don't care about the value then it doesn't matter but if you do want to buy these cards you know want to spend money and, and collect them and stuff it's like you really would rather them st at least stay at the same price you know so really it's a before you could kind of count on dark corridor that they weren't gonna at least get reprinted or anything like a ghost rare from Duel's Genesis. So it's not gonna reprint that, you know? Well, you thought. And then Starlights, yeah, these are these are not gonna get reprinted. They'll have lower rarity prints. They're not gonna have like the same rarity, not same technically, but very similar rarity. But now they are doing that. So it's a little interesting. So it's like some people have said like one of the most collectible cards ever. And it's like, yeah, these will be pretty collectible. They're cool. You can get the whole set, put them together. But what? who's to say they're not printed again, you know? 
it's always been a concern with with collecting stuff anyway so it's something you have to keep in the back of your mind but i do think it's fun uh the artwork on this is on the magician is pretty cool i think it's like it's not like top tier i don't think let me know what your opinion on the art i think it is better than average like compared to a lot of cards i think it's a, a pretty good artwork with the uh it's like dark magician dark magician girl or whatever the look of them I, I gotta look at it again once we pull it i'm kind of like it's about like a it's a pretty good artwork it's not my favorite though so i'm not like freaking out about that so let me know what you guys think about it do you guys really like it do you guys think this is a great idea in terms of collectability do you like that they're putting the same card but you can only pull it as a 25th that that i do like i think that's pretty cool to have a unique card because the, the other ones can be pulled in the set at lower rarity the thing about having it be the only pull about a high rarity that's what can really make people upset though the thing i love about the 25th slash starlight rarity is that they have a lower rarity uh, for people that want to play and then the higher rarity can be used for either collecting or if you let's say you want to play them like i know uh people like gauge or nim nim they really enjoy playing high rarity cards which personally in my like edison decks and stuff and goat decks i like having the high rarity too so i totally get that it's more fun when there's a high rarity and a low rarity when you're playing the high rarity if there's only a high rarity then everyone's playing the high rarity it's not special you know what i mean so i think it's cool to have both so there's a low rarity that if you don't want to spend stupid money on a card to play in your deck you want to buy like a two dollar version versus a two hundred dollar version it's awesome that that is available and then it's really cool as well that there's a two hundred dollar version so if you want to flex or you want to have a shiny deck that you can like show off or you just want to collect it in a binder or something there's that option as well and they can only exist if both exist so like you can have a high rarity but you're probably not going to be playing it most of the time if it's that high if then there's no other option like most people would not be playing so it, it's kind of interesting how that works so i like that there's both options and then both people can be happy but even then there will be people that will be upset that there's like an expensive card which doesn't make sense to me because if you're looking for a playable card and there's a two dollar option then i think it's good for both sides you know what i mean so let me know your opinion on that i like it like that back to the magicians of bonds and unity or whatever it's called this card i don't think it's playable so if it's not playable, it doesn't really matter because, you know, if it's not playable, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter if there's a low rarity. So it's cool for collectors that it is only available in the set. It's very, very cool. If it is playable, it's going to be one of those things where players are not happy because they can't access it very easily. So like, let's say if it is playable, what's it like 250, 300 bucks right now? You got to buy three of them for a set. I don't, for a play set. I don't think this is the case, but if it is, that's 600 to $900 for a play set of what, you know, three cards in the deck. Very difficult to uh, maintain that and like buy that as those come out. You know what I mean? And as there's like different versions, this price is going to go down. So there's going to be the different color backgrounds and it's not gonna really matter as much, I don't think. It's still basically just more coming onto the market. Some will be slightly different. It's kind of like Duelist League did with the names. Duelist League had a bunch of different cards and they all had like a, they'd have like a green name or a red name. I don't know if they have green. They had a silver name, gold name, all these different things. And all the prices pretty much stayed the same. Like they were all around the same area. And I'm guessing that when it first came out, the first version, well, it was so long ago, it was like 2008. First version was probably the most expensive. Then there's another version came out, just kind of, adding more to the uh to the pile or the uh availability on the market and stuff like that and i'm guessing that just brought the price slowly down as as it goes and i'm guessing that's what'll happen with the magicians of bonds and unity i'm guessing right now is probably the peak price it'll be for like this year probably you know in the future you never really know what'll happen but probably like the rest of the year this out of this set will be the most expensive magicians of bronze and unity and then we'll release another one go down a little bit release another one release another, stuff like that i don't know we'll see if the background color matters that much or if it doesn't but we're talking about Yu-Gi-Oh where a set name can really make a huge difference or you know stuff like that uh so maybe it is enough who knows i'm interested i'm just i'm just spitballing and, and talking about things i've been thinking about and i'm not really sure what's going to happen because there's no way to predict the future that's the thing it doesn't matter what it is you can be super confident there's no way to know what the answer is to cards, prices, cards, rarities, what Konami is going to do, um, you know, what value is going to be a card is going to have in like a year or two years, 10 years. There's no one to know. Like we can look at cards from 10 years ago, be like, look, they're way more expensive now. See? So it means they're going to be more expensive in 10 years. Doesn't mean that. What if Yu-Gi-Oh goes under 
What if something like that happens? What if they change the way the game is played? What if they uh, decide, you know what? Not enough new players are getting into uh, Yu-Gi-Oh right now. We're going to completely revamp the TCG and we're going to make it a lot different. And all these other cards that are valuable for the certain reason are no longer valuable. So there's a lot of things you have to consider uh, when the card is, you know, when a card is going down or going up or, you know, it's been 10 years and there's all these different things that can happen. So yeah, just a little mini, uh, mini rant. You guys know on these, uh, not really a rant, but uh, these case openings turn into mini solo pop podcast because we're opening so many packs we still pulled 25th by the way uh which we should get what are they one and four i said one and three i think yesterday they're one and four i, I guess i messed that up whoops sorry about that misinformation by accident oh there we go let's go all right all right is the magician let's go let's do a little uh do a little fun we have a uh, numblaria our first one of the day okay good luck breath we have realm storage pod we have a million century can we get that magician baby jurassic been talking about it for 10 minutes so let's see uh, Double-headed Dino and oh, an Emperor Charles the Great. Hey, Charles, what is going on? Our first 25th anniversary pull of the day. Very nice. It is a Link One for the Infra Noble Mites. Okay, interesting. Very cool. Or is it a Warrior or one level nine Infra Noble Knight Emperor Charles equipped with equip card? What? It has to be a specific card equipped with an equip card. That seems pretty situation i guess it may be in the deck it makes sense but that's not very generic for a link one okay our first uh, 25th i can't imagine that's a very expensive card because the way cards are expensive in the tcg is if they're either extremely good in a deck and i don't think that infer noble is a great card i'm guessing with the noble knight support that's you know infer noble is like another part of that demigod of the testina very cool I'm guessing that that isn't super good. And then the other way that they can be super expensive is for it to be generic and be playable in a ton of good decks or a lot of different decks. And that is definitely not playable in a ton of different decks based on what I read. So there's my TCG analysis. I'm guessing that is not a great priced one. I don't have the price guide up. So this is just me uh, spitballing and guessing. And my guess is that it's not one of the better ones, but that's okay. It's a 25th anniversary. We're looking for some other cool ones as well. We have a Mirror Sword Knight. That's a super rare and very nice. Come on, give us some packs that have some epic cards. We have not pulled the best secret, by the way. We haven't pulled a lot of secrets in general, actually. Feels like the secrets have been pretty few and far between as of right now. Altergeist. Paratrader, Paratrotter. Okay, keep it going. Dune, can you bless us? Not the movie, the set. All right, I remember somebody asked me about Dune. They were like, do you see the Dune like leaks or something? And I was like, are you talking about the movie? Like, no, the Yu-Gi-Oh set. I was like, whoops, probably should have known that, but I didn't. Uh, we have the Chimera, the Illusion Beast. Chimera, Yugi's favorite card. Can we get something epic in here? Uh, Visa Armitara, very nice. That's a secret rare, we'll take it. I have not pulled that one in any of my openings yet, so that's a new one. Very cool. Uh, these packs are opening a lot easier. What was I opening the other day? The OTS, oh my goodness, nightmare to open those up. Big winged Burfamet. Burfamet's even getting some retrains, that's pretty cool. So far, 125th, not bad. We pulled two so far overall in our search for uh, the Magicians of Bonds and Unity. We pulled one yesterday, pulled one today in this longer video. Hopefully we will get even more in this video. Maybe we'll get lucky and get four. I think that would be pretty lucky if we got four. Three seems to be the average for these. Wheel Synchron, we have a Divine Domain. Batistina, very nice. Can we do it? New World Formation, we have a Mirror Sword Knight. Also pretty cool, the Greed of Jar. Duelist Nexus. You are epic, you are awesome, but what will we get? Chimera, the Illusion Beast. Man, there is a ton of Chimera, so they really went hard on the Chimera archetype in this. Pretty cool, I guess. Did it even exist before this? I don't even know. Crystal God Testina, secret rare. More secrets are showing up, very nice. Is this a retrain of the old trap card? Aqua Chorus round, the Aqua Chorus. Isn't a trap card, I think? I think it might've been a game promo, actually. So there is a ton of retrain. I'm just, I'm noticing more and more as I go through. It's like almost everything is some sort of retrain, which is pretty fun. Pretty, pretty fun. I love it. We have the uh, Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws. Pretty awesome. A lot of packs have been open so far. It's been some good pulls. We haven't got the best secret rare just yet. That is what we are searching for. Can we get it? We have the Infernoble Knights. Maria Cardetto. I don't know what percentage we're done. Maybe like a third, maybe. I don't know. A Heat of the Fire Charmer. 
We have a lot of packs left, that's for sure. Many packs to be open in this video. Hope you guys have had a good time with these videos and you've enjoyed them. Let me know down below if you've enjoyed them and what else you wanna see from new sets because I did do uh, a couple of open, I did a little bit different this time. Normally do like a versus video with the old uh, old set, you know, the previous set, I should say. This time I did just another opening. Let me know what you thought about that. Do you like the doing a versus or do you wanna see just more of this open searching for one of the big cards or? How do you want to see these videos done? Because I want to get a few videos out of the new sets, but I don't want them to be boring to you guys. You know what I mean? So what would you guys be interested in seeing out of new sets? I've done different things. Like we've done the speed opening challenges, trying to get them in like 10 minutes, opening as fast as possible. Those didn't seem to perform that well. So I kind of stopped doing those. There was also, I feel like we did something else on, in kind of that, that vein. That's the lowest, very cool. So if you guys have something that you want to see, let me know. All right, let's keep it up. And speaking of stuff you want to see you probably don't actually want to see it but if you have not heard of my pokemon channel i know i've been promoting a lot that's because i've been putting in a lot of work over there we posted a really awesome video at least i'm really i'm really proud of it i don't know if it's awesome to you but you guys can go watch it Posted a really awesome uh, all flying type nuzlocke of pokemon silver that has a full voiceover and everything a scripted everything for the uh the entire openings or the that's not an opening entire video so if you guys haven't seen that and you guys didn't know so here's the thing about the pokemon channel i made the pokemon channel so that you guys who don't care about pokemon don't have to see it the problem with that is the people who are interested in it a lot of them don't even know i have it it's because it's not posted on the, the regular channel so i like to that people say you need to mention it more so i try to mention it more but not too much where it's annoying to you guys so it's usually in these kind of videos where it's a it's a long video and if you're really into you know my content then you'll probably still be here and it'll go to the right people who are interested in more of my content even if it's not Yu-Gi-Oh. this is where i usually mention that we did have a little little mini ad it's like a fake ad for poker rocks yesterday uh just to get the word out there a little bit more because i am super hyped about that video and i wanted people to see it and so far it's done really well um we're only I'm recording this the day before you guys see this, so it's only been out for a couple hours, a few hours, and it's doing pretty well. So it seems like people are liking it, but we are at the point where that that channel slash my Twitch stream and everything, I think I, I did a little bit of math and I think I'm, I also forgot another expense, but uh, the math before the other expense I forgot, which now I can't remember what it was. What was I, else was I losing money on for that? I can't remember, but all my Twitch streaming time, the time I'm putting into it, and then like the actual editing costs and everything like that, we're like minus $200 a month. So I'm paying to do that Pokemon channel in general, like we're losing money and it's costing me a lot of time. But the thing is, I really enjoy doing that stuff on Twitch. It's really fun interacting with you guys. And I enjoyed making the videos off stream, which I did with this last one. And it's just fun. So it's kind of like a hobby at this point, you know? So a lot of you guys are doing cards on the side and you you might be losing a little bit of money opening up product and stuff. So I'm basically doing that, except for with Pokemon. So Yu-Gi-Oh! is now like the job, but it's a fun job, of course. It's not like I don't like it. But then we have the uh, the hobby, which is losing me money on the side, the Pokemon channel. But we've had some pretty awesome support so far, and I'm really enjoying it. Okay, let's keep it up. Enough about the Pokemon channel. I know you guys are you're tired of hearing about the Pokemon channel. I'm sorry. Okay, let's do this. Yu-Gi-Oh! time, baby. Let's get... I, I was hoping that maybe by talking about Pokemon, it'd bring out a 25th anniversary card or something. <laughs> maybe it would rise to the top or something. Manadium. That's a super. Very cool. Let's see what we can do. We have Makanko. We have Manadium. Torrid. That's back-to-back -back of the same super right there. I feel like the secrets just feel like few and far between today. I don't know if they're maybe waiting at the end or something. Who knows? Let's see what we can get. We're still probably like halfway through the case at this point. So we got a long way to go still. Valence Wave, we have a Manadium Torrid. That's a lot of those in a row. Come on, 25th. Very excited for more openings. I like how many like new exciting sets there have been this year. It's been fun. I'm, I'm like, I'm honestly like scared about the 26th, you know? When we get to the 26th anniversary, is it gonna just be like, I mean, they're not gonna celebrate that. I'm just saying the 26th year. So next year after this is all over, are we just gonna be bored? Are we just gonna have boring product? Which is scary because like, you know, a lot of my uh, videos are about new products. So if it's boring product, it's not good for me. And it's also not fun to do boring product, you know? So it's a, I'm like, oh, hopefully that doesn't happen. We have Demigod of the Testina, or maybe they'll take some inspiration from some of the stuff they've come up with in the 25th, like Rarity Collection, hopefully. And maybe we'll see some more just added to Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. Dreaming Reality, because we've been like, we've been spoiled this year with so many like incredible sets. I almost chunked that pack. 
uh, just like fun things to do, like, you know, open the 25th anniversary, some crazy, that's a Crimson Dragon, first time pulling that. We've had crazy uh, sets like Rarity Collection coming out with all those different rarities. We've had a lot of awesome stuff. I and mean, we didn't have any Ghost Rare stuff really this year. We had Legendary Duels coming out like in a couple weeks. Uh, it's just one Ghost though, I think. So it's not like Ghost from the Past or anything like that, but we have had so many 25th anniversary rarities, I guess. That kind of makes up for it. We have a Angelica, Princess of Noble Arms. We still have not pulled the best secret, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Uh, is it short printed? Maybe. Is it variants? Probably. Most, almost every time you do an opening, it's probably variants versus short printing these days. They don't seem to short print as much these days. Um, but if it is a significant difference on the best cards, then it's probably a short print. But a case, remember a case opening is still not a big sample size. A case opening is still small. Like a lot of variants can happen in one case. We're still, we still gonna have the numbers out there. Probably on, I usually tweet out my case ratios after I do the big openings on live streams. So if you guys wanna see case ratios uh, out of a few cases, however many we open, then go follow my Twitter at Ruxin34 or my X or whatever it's called these days. You know, whatever the stupid thing's called. Uh, go follow it, and then I'll uh, I'll tweet out the numbers for you guys so you guys can see kind of a small sample size, but at least some sort of idea. We have a Tokusano Shinkyojin. Yeah, this is not great. Can we get some uh, Synchron dudes? Can we get some Synchrons, baby? Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. I think it was Synchron. Something Synchron. Who knows? Can't remember. I forgot already. Oh, no. Oh, there you are. Something Synchron. Revolution Synchron. Simply say his name wrong. He will come out blazing he is not happy that's the card we're looking for there we go best card in the set finally i mean that's not a 25th obviously but finally we got one there we go okay it's not a 25th but it is a secret very very nice sentinel of the testina can we pull something epic the adada we have oh yes you just say the something synchron and you go back to back two in a row that's a game changer we have now officially made this case decent okay it was starting off really bad with no revolution synchron we've now pulled two in like the last three minutes that was definitely not three minutes that was like one minute that was like 30 seconds maybe okay maybe we can pull three in a row who knows there's a secret okay we're starting to hit some secrets right here this is good this is real good this is what we're looking for secret time okay noble arms museum a lot of foils okay greed jar good to see you buddy not a lot of magicians of faithfulness i will say i think we've only pulled three is that right it's kind of crazy actually a lot of different supers probably so that will make it difficult to pull a lot of the same one still looking still searching we'll take more revolution synchron let's take more 25th anniversaries banishing trap hole still need a clarification on what the difference is there somebody let me know i haven't played master duel in a while that might help uh big winged burfament i was about to say bug winged oh my goodness yeah master duel it's been a little bit of a break since we've played that but that was kind of where i learned a lot of how to play current Yu-Gi-Oh. even though it's not the same ban list and stuff you can really learn a lot of how cards work work and stuff like that which i kind of had a small idea 25th anniversary baby i had a small idea of how they worked but that really it really helps out when you see it automatically played out with the automatic system and everything aqua chorus round let's get a 25th nemlaria greed jar we will get that magician of bonds and unity let's go i need some bonds so i don't have to say this anymore behemoth i always want to say burfamet when i see that so every samurai and oh the crimson dragon that's a pretty cool one i don't know the value on this thing but it is a pretty cool i mean synchros usually aren't too crazy in terms of value in terms of like playability so one tuner and one non-tuner pretty generic that's nice this is a pretty amazing artwork i like it. it's very simple i like simple but it's also shiny which is cool okay second 25th pretty nice run we're on here we had a couple revolution synchrons and we got a 25th very nice. All we had to do was bring up Master Duel and we were good to go. Master Duel bringing us that luck. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. We have a new world. We have a Mirror Sword Knight. Go check the Mirror Sword Knight out. I don't know why I said go check it out. Why is that an illusion card, by the way? Mirror Sword Knight. I guess Mirror is kind of illusion-y. You know, Mirror is, ooh, where is he? You know, I, I don't know. I really don't. Okay, let's go pack. Give us something crazy. Infra Noble Arms, Owl Mace, Ultra Rare. Lots of good cards have been pulled. I feel like we're down at least past halfway now a little bit. Emperor Charles the Great. That's the card that we got a 25th of. Man, these cards are not wanting to shuffle, man. They don't want to be seen. They're like, no, go straight to the foil, baby. Rux and Specialist, please. We have a Thessalus, the Fire Monarch, Firestorm Monarch, Shadow Fire Monarch. There we go. Firestorm Monarch's a different guy. Shadow Fire Monarch. Let's, keep, you know, they just start, they're just whipping around the adjectives now. They're just like, yep, adjective, noun, stick them together, flip them around. We'll make a couple different cards out of that. 
you know, we're, we're never going to run out of names at that rate. We have the, oh my goodness, what, is that ice cream at the top? Dreaming Reality, he's got a little ice cream on his head. Interesting. Him and Vanillish would be good fans, I guess. Let's see what else we can get. Or good fans. Slip near the runic main. We have not pulled this yet. So we pulled two revel. We're just... We haven't even pulled all the secrets yet. Are there more secrets in this set? That's a, that's not good if there is. It makes it harder to pull specific ones. Fusion Armament. Okay, Flame Swordsman. This is apparently the Dark Flare Knight. And then uh, uh, Josh told me that there's a Dark Magician in here somewhere. And I don't, I don't see the Dark Magician anywhere. But I do see the Dark Flare Knight on the back. That's really cool. All right, cool stuff. Thanks, Josh, for that little tidbit there. I don't see the Dark Magician, but he's probably in there somewhere. Uh, we have a Altergeist Per... Paratrader, 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 Paratrader is probably how you say that, right? Uh, we have a Synchro Force Back, Synchro Force Back. Duelist Nexus, we're on a marathon. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this podcast type opening, uh, because it is a lot of Ruxin talking. And all you guys who hate when I talk a lot, you guys probably hate this video right now. You're like, Ruxin, you gotta stop talking, man. Gotta stop it, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And these long ones, it's just gonna, it's gonna be a lot of talking. It's just how it goes. There's a Tokusano. Very nice. 25th anniversary. We've already gotten two. So on average, we'll get one more. Maybe if we get lucky, we could get two. Evelzar Lars. That was a card we pulled in the first like two packs. That's our first one since then. So I think getting two revolutions pretty nice because so far we don't really have multiples of many. We only have two of some and zero of others maybe unless that was our last one that we didn't have hopefully they haven't yet done like 14 secrets that would be pretty rough we want it to be 10 so we have a better chance to get those good ones come on baby diadara we have an ultra guys paratrader i think paratraders i say it just sounds a lot better come on nexus you can do this give us an epic magician of souls and unity magician of bonds and unity magician souls what i keep wanting to say Magician of Bond, Souls, and Unity. Let's go, baby. We have Magician of Bell Bonds and Soul and Unity. What are we going to get? We have Ultimate, Bright Knight, Ursatron, Alpha. What a name. Nice and long. At least some, uh, there's some crazy names in here, but not as crazy as sometimes. Like Magnum the Reliever, I can handle that. That's pretty solid. Pretty easy to read. There's sometimes where they have the craziest names. Cosmic Case, Quasar. Did you say Quasar or Quasar? Quasar is a little easier. Quasar, pronouncing a Q is not easy. It's a lot, little bit of uh, extra work, you know what I mean? We have a Chimera Fusion. Have we really only pulled three Magician of Faithfulness in this whole case so far? It's pretty wild. Unless I miss some, Angelica, we possibly missed some at the beginning, maybe. But I don't remember them, at least. Duelist Nexus, we have to keep it up. Don't give in. You must believe that we will pull the Magician of Bonds and Unity. We literally never put. We open these cases all the time. We never pull the card we want in the case opening. You think eventually we would pull the one, the one we want in the case opening? It just doesn't happen. It just does not happen. It's crazy. You never get, or I never get lucky enough to pull it then. We always got to go for like eight hours live. I guess it is pretty low chance when you think about it. With 25 unique ones, that you have to open a lot of cases, like in seven or eight or six or something like that. I think it's wait. No, it's three per case. Yeah, that's why I got confused yesterday about the ratios because I was thinking it was one in, or four per case, but it's three per case. That's why it's harder. So that'd be eight to nine cases to get your, that'd be 24 to 27 quarter century secret rares and the average is one in 25 because there's 25 of them. You get, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Or yeah, there's 25 of them and there's one specific one. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough to get the one you're looking for. So hopefully... We can get lucky and not have to open 27 different quarter century secret rares to get it. Because last time, never got that Dark Magician. Still haven't gotten him. He was too hard to pull for us. He defeated us. Dark Magician on the Gaia. Gaia Horse, aka the Curse of Dragon. We have the Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. Duelist Nexus, you've been good. But have you been good enough? We need something better. Magnum, the Reliever. We need more Duelist Nexus luck. We have the Double Head King Rex. Altergeist. Paratrader. Believe in the heart of the cards. We will pull something out at Banishing Trap. Oh, we have pulled a lot. Come on, baby. Let's do this. We have a double-headed King Rex. The King Rex is back and he's actually got some... Well, actually, no, he's still 1600 attack. So is the double-headed and the, what's the big one? Is it triple-headed? What is it? Magician of Faithfulness. First one in forever, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Been a, quite a long time. It's been a long time since we pulled that card. Been a long time since we started the video. This time we're pulling Magician Souls and Unity. That's not the name. Magicians Bonds and Unity. I'm never going to get it right. I'm just saying. Same with that guy. Or guy. Ah, I still said it wrong. I'm literally making a point about how I can't say it. That Dark Magician of Dragon Magic, Knight of Dragon Magic. 
these names, man, they're just getting insane. We're just throwing adjectives everywhere. It's like Dark Magician, throw a bunch of adjectives and then of and the in there somewhere. And then just, how am I supposed to remember these, okay? There's too many. Dark Magician, the Knight of Dragon Magic and Magicians of Bonds and Unity. I was gonna, I wanna say souls. I just wanna say souls. Man, it's too tough, man. This is, this is a lot of work for me, okay? A lot of work to keep up with this. Okay, we're probably down to maybe a third or quarter left. We're getting there, we're getting close. We can do this. This is our time. You gotta believe. Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon, let's go. Where is potentially the last quarter century secret rare? I'm hoping for two more, but I think we're probably only gonna get one. I have, you know, the unrealistic hope that we will get an eighth or an eighth one, a fourth one. An eighth one would be crazy too. Yeah, if we start pulling them left and right, that'd be nice. Uh, Valence Wave, Valence card, still not good. I wonder if eventually Valence will become good. I guess they'll give it enough support at some point, maybe. But as of right now, I think it's been kind of a dud so far. Come on, we're, I'm guessing we're down to about three to four boxes here. That's what I think. Divine Domain. Can we pull it? The card we have been searching for for now three days. Tomorrow will be the fourth day. Will we conquer it? Duelist Knight. There's also, by the way, that Legendary Duelist set is coming out in like two weeks. So we already have another new set. There were two weeks ago, we got the booster boxes of the 25th anniversary sets, all the reprints and stuff. Then we have these. And then I wasn't, uh, I think uh, Armageddon, was it? No, not Armageddon. What was it? Monster's Revenge it was two weeks before that. So then two weeks before that was that. And two weeks after is, you know, this set. And then two weeks after that, we have the Legendary Duelist, Volcanic, whatever it's called, Volcanic Eruption or something. I don't know. That might be a Pokemon move. But there is literally so many sets coming out in a row. It is insane. It's, it's great for content. It's not great for uh, selling and selling you know, all this stuff. There is a lot of order, a lot of listing. You know, it is very, very busy at the moment, which is good. It's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Usually like three weeks is a little better. It gives you a little bit more time to, to regroup, but we've been hit with sets left and right at this point. Okay, Duelist Nexus. I don't know much about that next Legendary Duelist set. I'm assuming it'll be one Ghost Rare. I'm wondering what it'll be. I don't think there's been a leak for that just yet. So... Is it going to be the uh, Volcanic Doomfire or whatever he's called? Not the, uh, what do I call him all the time? The Doomfire, not the Doomfire Dragon, right? And that's a different guy. That's a Synchro. That is not the Volcanic Doomfire. Uh, we have a Gazelle, King of Mythical Beasts. Claws, I should say. What can we get in the last, not even a few packs, the last several packs. There's a lot of packs left. We have Manadium. We want more Revolution Synchron. At least three would be nice. Four would be fantastic, obviously but three would be ideal to get at least that many. They are by far the best secret in the set, or it is the by far the best secret in the set. We have a Mighty Dino King Rex. Getting toward the end, so we're gonna not worry about the commons as much here. We have a uh, Altergeist Maluisp. I mean, we're, we're so, I mean, if you're at this point in the video, then you don't care about the commons at this point. All right, what's our secret password for this video? We did Stinky Pokemon before, that was fun. That was the origin of Stinky P. I think we need to think about something else fun. How about, um, we also had Robot Ruxin. That was a fun one. Robot Ruxin. A uh, lot, I saw a lot of those in the comments. That was pretty funny. So, hmm, what could our next, if you have made it this far, you are a true fan of the videos. You're watching all the way to the end of these super long videos. What is a special code word going to be to prove that you are a super fan? You are a legend. Let's see. Legend code in the comments will be last time. The stinky P was a was a card that we found, which was pretty cool. We don't want to use stinky again. <sighs> 25th anniversary, Angelica, Princess of Noble Arms. OK, all right, Angelica, Princess of Noble Arms. How about OK, let's do this. Let's do a little let's do a little troll on the on the fake fans of the channel. OK, how about we do a little troll? So if you're a true fan, you made it this far. Put amazing quarter century secret or uh, amazing quarter century secret rare or something like that or amazing uh how about insane pull uh insane uh it's got to be a little bit more unique so it's not just like complete troll how about like i can't believe you did it how about that that's the secret rare. i can't believe you did it hashtag robo robo rux even though robo rux hadn't made an appearance can't believe you did it hashtag robo rux how about that and then a bunch of people are like what what happened They'll be looking around the video because they're not watching the whole video. They're like, what's going on? And then they'll see uh, 25th anniversary. So like, okay, okay, what did he do? What did he do? And they'll never know. They'll never know. And only we will know because we are at the end of the video. Let's go. All right, put that secret code at the end. I want to see it. I mean, I'm not going to hear it from him. I'm probably going to read it, but 
Let's see what we can get at the end. We've already gotten three quarter century seeker, which is fine. Okay, not too bad. We've got a couple synchros. I feel like these aren't the best ones usually, but we are getting some cool cards, which is nice. We do want to get another revolution synchron for sure. That would be really nice for this case. It would definitely add in. The funny part about the quarter centuries is now you usually get about the same number of quarter centuries, like general quarter centuries, as you would like one of the lower printed secret rares. Like, I remember last time in the Monsters Revenge, a lot of the cards that were like really short printed, because they did short print in that set, you got less of those secret rares as you did like total quarter century secret rares, which is kind of weird. All right, Nexus, we're down to a couple boxes at this point. We have Magician of Faithfulness, only number five of that. So we've pulled three quarter century secret rares, five Magician of Faithfulness super rares, pretty weird. Thessalos the Shadow Fire Monarch, also pretty nice. Come on, baby, Sentinel of... Justina. Justina is just, is that really how you say that? Just, it doesn't flow off the tongue. I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't, doesn't oh, that's another one. Just sent it all to Justina. Back to back. Wanted me to have to say it again. We have the ultimate Bright Knight, Ursatron Alpha. Can we pull something crazy at the end? If we get another quarter century, this is a crazy, crazy case. Which I'm down for a crazy case. I'm also down for back to back uh, synchrons again. Uh, Crystal God. Justina as well. Okay. Only a couple packs left here. Nightmare Magician. We're starting to get secret rares here. Lots of secrets being pulled. We have the Ultra Guys and Mal Wisp. Let's go. We have a Fusion Armament. Ultra. Very cool. Little Flame Swordsman Dark Flare Knight action. They're fighting together. Slip near the Ruining Main. Only the second time we pulled that card. So that's good, I guess. I don't know if that's actually a good one. Runic is usually pretty good. It's pretty hated, but it is pretty good, I think. Uh, all right, he made the manifested Makunko. Last few packs, we have a, ooh, Revolution Synchron. That's a play set. I can't be mad about this case now. Three quarter century secret rares, three Revolution Synchrons. That's pretty nice. If we get anything else now, another Revolution or another quarter century, this is awesome. This is really, really good. Another Banishing Trap Hole. Already been a pretty, pretty solid case. We're not getting the crazy quarter centuries, I don't think, but we're at least getting some that's going to add some value to this case, which is nice. We'll see if we uh, have made our money back at the end. I probably should have mentioned that earlier that we were going to do that, but you guys will see as we go. See if we can make it back. Let's go. We have a Hound. Nexus, here we go. These are still going to be pre-release prices, though, by the time you see this. Even though this is the first day they're available, the editing will have been done yesterday, so... Yeah, obviously they will they will not be perfect, but we'll see what we can get there in terms of value. You're finished. Are we finished? Not quite. We still have a few packs left. Few packs left. We're definitely down to about one box or a little less. Angel Princess. Will there be any secrets left? A Revolution Synchron is one that I would love to see. This corner does not want to open. We have a Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. What can we pull? Chimera. Not the Flying Mythical Beast. What does this one say? The King of Phantom Beasts. There we go. The Phantom Beast archetype, right? Yeah, that is one that has been around for a while. Arahime, very nice. Definitely getting close to the end here. Duelist Genesis, super rare. Gotta believe we can get a fourth quarter century, a quarter, four of them go into a dollar. So four of them should go into a case. That just makes sense, right? Should, I just dropped it. That means there's 25th in there. This one has the magician in there. Nope, doesn't does not have the magician. What about this one? You're finished. No, not you. Really cutting down to the end. We might be a magician of faithfulness, finally. Can we pull something crazy to end it off and really make this a awesome, awesome case? Cosmic Kesar Dragon, very nice. Definitely down under a box at this point, probably close to like 15 packs left. I just threw that pack onto the screen. Whoops, nothing there. Looks like we're down to the very end. Eperly Noir, How? we have not pulled many of those. For being an ultra, we have not pulled many of those at all. That's the best ultra rare, so I haven't seen that in quite a while. I think we started with like one or two, but it's been a while since we pulled one. Philomat Matek, is that like the only Mathematic card in here? Maybe some commons or something I haven't paid attention to? Gazelle, I don't remember seeing any more. Okay, this is it. We're down to the last nine packs, it seems like. We have a Mighty Dino King Rex. Eight packs left, okay. Really getting interesting now. Monadium. Will there be even another secret rare in here? We'll find out. Could have pulled them all already. It's definitely possible. We have a Chimera Fusion. Duelist Nexus. Let's see. Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. Five packs left in this case. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. There will be more case openings of new sets. There will be more case openings of old sets. Be more old openings in general. New openings. Mediumly old openings. All that different stuff. Three packs left. Wow, we are... Ending on a dud so far, Hound. Okay, a bunch of supers so far. Two packs left. Can one of these give us some, some luck here? I don't know. Maybe this is the one. Let's find out. Let's see if we can, Hound. Okay. Is it going to end on a super rare? Just a bunch of supers? Let's find out. We did get three Revolution Synchron in three quarters. We can't complain. Let's see. We have a another super. Okay, last pack magic was not there today, but that's okay. 
This was a pretty good opening. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Shout out to Tom Fo Show, Daxer, JT Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Dian, and Macycle, America Doyster, Supreme Sage 21, Shazam Yusuf, aka Cobra Kai, Orgad Levin, and Entai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barney, Mimic Gecko, and Robert F. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.